This is New Cap News with Nicole Stilger. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Yesterday's whiteout conditions caused chaos on city streets and highways in and around Lloydminster. Angie Mellon has more on exactly what happened. Yesterday, just after 2.30, a blowing snow advisory was issued and led to RCMP responding to numerous calls of collisions and vehicles in the ditch. There were eight reported collisions to us. Thankfully, there were no injuries reported with those, but there were several of motorists who were stopped or stranded. Uh, there were numerous and countless vehicles in the ditch, uh, especially between here and Vermilion. With the amount of calls the RCMP received yesterday, a decision was made to close Highway 16. A decision the RCMP says made a positive impact. It was only closed for a short period of time, uh, close to two hours, but we know that that decision definitely was positive and something that could have potentially saved a life. Along with the eight collisions reported to the Lloydminster RCMP, the Lloydminster Rescue Squad also responded to three calls. The team responded very well. It was probably a little nerve-wracking uh, because you couldn't see uh, your, your fellow team member within uh, 20 feet of each other, so those whiteout conditions were pretty, uh, pretty scary to, to work in. Both the RCMP and the Rescue Squad urge people not to drive when conditions are as bad as they were yesterday. They should be staying home where they're safe. Uh, there's, there's absolutely no need to drive in, especially when you have whiteout. When you can't see the front end of your vehicle, uh, it's, it's just not, uh, it's, it's not smart to be out driving around uh, unless you absolutely have to uh, get home. Angie Mellon, New Cap News. Well, back at home now, public speaking skills were put to the test this afternoon as many local business employees and owners gathered as part of this month's Toastmasters Chamber Connect event. The Chamber of Commerce and Toastmasters gave business owners the chance to connect with other business owners to exchange ideas, experiences and tips. I think at, at no time has it been more important for local businesses to, to connect with each other and let each other let each other in on what's happening in their businesses to see if there's synergies that they can come up with and, and ways they can work together. There was also a contest for public speaking that 10 brave souls took head on with the skills they've learned in their own businesses. In difficult times like we have in this economic climate, your ability to speak and interact with customers makes a huge difference. And also some people would be attending interviews and they need to practice their public speaking skills. Something just as simple as an exercise of being given a uh, topic to speak on and being asked to speak on it for two solid minutes, I think that's an exercise that we could actually implement as a business with our employees and get them to um, empower themselves in that. And the second annual transplant trot is now open for registration. The inaugural event in 2016 was the first indoor trot in Canada and organizers are hoping the number of registered tissue and organ donors continues to go up across the country. Josh Ryan has more in this week's Healthy Living. On January 28th, family and friends of transplant donors and recipients will join them on the service centre track for the second annual transplant trot, a celebration of life after transplant. Tissue and organ are, are both uh, things that uh, help, help individuals to um, be able to overcome some of the difficulties that they're in. Natick received a kidney in 2011 after living on dialysis for two years. Before the transplant, many aspects of life were limited. If to, to be able to even uh, take holidays, to, to, to go to family weddings outside of your area that you're doing dialysis in, it's, it's very disruptive. The demand for transplants is high, with over 500 people in Canada currently waiting. That is why people taking part in the walk hope to share the impact it can have. Our host family this year is a, is a lady who received a portion of uh, her brother's liver. They're both going to be at the trot celebrating. Uh, we've got heart transplants. We have uh, pancreas transplants. In addition to raising awareness for transplant need, the trot is also intended to promote regular exercise. Many people don't even recognize that we have an indoor walking track and it, it, it's really um, uh, inexpensive to use and it's so healthy to, to do 20 minutes a day, half an hour a day of walking. And like last year when the trot brought out over 250 people, Natick hopes that it will help recipients celebrate how their lives have changed. I like to walk when I go off. I remember having to walk off after the fourth hole because I couldn't go any farther. 
and to be able to now walk 20 laps at the service center. Pretty special thing. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. Well, the financial challenges of the late harvest are still facing producers ahead of this spring. In this week's agriculture report, Gerard Lampau chats with a representative from a local financial agency to assess producers' options. We're lucky for the most part in the Lloydminster region. The large part of our members were able to get their crop off, but um, in the southern part of the province towards Kindersley, we have a significant part of our membership that maybe is only 85 to 90 percent complete. So what were the producer in that scenario? What are they dealing with right now uh, financially? Let's start there. Well, with un unharvested crop and field, obviously there's, there isn't the income there that you can sell your crop. So we're encouraging people to be proactive is, is our biggest message. They, they need to talk to us and we're more than willing to help. Each case is completely individual. What would be some of the general things we're looking at to help them out? Some of the common ones would be cash injections, um, bulges on their existing operating loans, looking at extending out amortizations or restructuring all of their credit altogether, or potentially deferring some of their principal payments. The quality definitely won't be there. It's, it's already deteriorated significantly. There are other options available. Um, the Canadian Canola Growers Association has extended their cash advance to March. So there's access there whether, whether the farmer had applied earlier or not. Um, that would give them some access to cash quite quickly, along with other options we can consider for cash injections and those kinds of things at Synergy. So it's just a matter of looking again at individual situations and uh, just assuring folks that all is not lost. There's still a few options uh, available then. Yes, absolutely. And really the, the beauty of most farmers is they're resilient. They've, they've seen it all. What's happened this past year is kind of potentially a once in a lifetime thing with how long harvest dragged on. It was a, a bumper crop, probably the second largest Canada's ever seen. And to see it sitting out there not being able to get at it is extremely depressing. But we, we always find ways to work with them and we'll continue to do that. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Well, the Lloydminster Bobcats haven't had the season they want, and many people would attribute their 9-27-2 record to a young, inexperienced team. This theory may hold true, but as Lance Phillips shows us, the team's erratic play is not a symptom of inability, but rather inconsistency. The Lloydminster Bobcats are a study in the contrary. Four nights after an inspired, well-rounded win against Drayton Valley, the team was dominated by Sherwood Park Wednesday. The culprit? A facet of the team game that's great one night and non-existent the next. D-zone, I thought we were soft on pucks, soft on making plays, and, you know, at this time of year, it just doesn't work, and, you know, um, you know we've got to correct that if we want to win hockey, hockey games down the stretch. We need to compete harder in the defense zone. We dominate out there offensively, so if we could get better defensively, I think we're going to win more hockey games. You know, in terms of what Lloyd gave us today, uh, they gave us some opportunities in the offensive zone and, and gave us some time and space to, to dish the puck around a little bit. But, uh, you know, for the most part, we were, uh, you know, we were, we were average today and we were able to still get the two points, so that's a positive. Fast starts have also been an area the Bobcats have expressed as a key to developing wins. With a nasty blizzard hampering Sherwood Park's journey to Lloyd Minster, the Bobcats jumped out to an early 1-0 lead, but couldn't hold it. Did a play maybe a small part? Yeah, we thought we were a little bit flat to start the, to start the hockey game, but uh, you know we, we thought we picked it up in the back half of the first, and that's where we got the two goals, and uh, we ended up going into the break up 2-1, so that was big for us, and that kind of changed the whole tide of the hockey game. The good news for the Bobcats? Well, it comes in the form of Zach Webb, Chase and Braid, and Rob Johnson. The line continues to perform well, and has provided three of the team's five goals and a combined nine points over its last two games. Again on Wednesday, the line was the best on the ice, consistently generating chances in the offensive zone while being aggressive defensively. Uh, we got lots of speed on that line, so we're all we're at the play at the same time. Our cycle game's good down low, which helps, and we dominate an offensive zone because of speed. Webb's line is, is skilled and creative, and. Uh, you know, we, we did give credit to the guys that we played real well defensively, and, and that was one of the things that you have to do against, you know, two skilled lines that they have. They're communicating. They're communicating when they come off the ice. They're talking about what they should do, what, the, you know, and that's a sign of a good line that has some chemistry, and they showed it again tonight, and I was really, really happy with their effort tonight. 
Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloydminster. And it's a tight race in the top three spots in ACAC North men's basketball. Nate, Concordia, Lakeland all hold those positions respectively, but the picture could look drastically different after the next two weekends. Lakeland's men's squad is nearly at full health, and the addition of some talented players have definitely put the team in championship conversations. The next two weekends provide a good test of Lakeland's talents beginning Friday at Concordia. We have them coming up, then we have a bye, and then we have Nate. So... Uh there's no time to relax, and uh, I know right now they're getting some uh, good practice games in against uh, Med Hat, which is, is very strong, playing in the Nate tournament, preseason uh, tournament right now. So uh, it, it comes down to the next couple of weeks, and, and hopefully uh, we're ready for the other competitions. There's no time to slack. Anybody can beat you on any given day. Now there are some similarities between the three teams, beginning with the amount of players each is putting on the floor. Nate's going to have their two big guys back and maybe a couple of new additions. Uh, Concordia is uh, real deep. They go uh, full 12 as well. So hopefully this gives us an advantage and hopefully we're able to go uh, 12 deep and, and wear teams down. Well, the Lloydminster Junior B Bandits have a full weekend coming up, playing three games in three nights. Here's Lance Phillips with a preview of the team's upcoming games, also giving us a glimpse into something special. After an emotionally charged win over Vermillion, the Bandits were outscored 22 to 8 in two weekend losses. It left the team searching for answers, and it didn't take long to find them. In these games, they they happen once in a while, like losing the game in Killam. We were, which was Friday night, we lost 10-6. Um, you know, you score six goals on the road, probably should win. Oh, you know, like we come out flying against Vermillion. We had lots of we were going. But when we played Frog Lake, it was just not going for us. We come out flat and nothing was going our way. Next up is Salmon Lake on Friday, a struggling team that gives Lloyd Minster an opportunity to get back on track. We got to give it to them. Like it's, you know, nobody's taking it easy on us when we've been down. And, you know, they're down right now. Um, they've had a few guys walk out the door in the last few days and they're in a tough spot, but I mean, that's, that's hockey, that's the way she goes. It gets tougher after that, with games against Wainwright and Vermillion, Saturday and Sunday, respectively. It's hard, we're going to have to pace ourselves, but in the same sense, we got to go, because we need these points to climb the standings, because we're in a tough place, we're in fourth place right now, we need to keep her there or else climb, you know. Uh, it's pretty tough, yeah, it's tough on your body, it's tough on your mind, so you just have to regroup and uh, come out strong. You know, the guys are going to be tired, but hey, suck it up. It's, it is what it is, and that's why we practice, and we work hard in practice, and there should be no issues with conditioning or anything like that. Outside the game, the team continues to mourn the loss of Brenda Stansfield, the mother of forward Jesse Stansfield, who lost her battle with leukemia January 2nd. In support of the family and all people who fight leukemia, Bandits players will wear this ribbon on their helmet for the remainder of the season. Another classy gesture from an organization that understands there's more to life than winning. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloydminster.